What's up everybody, Steven here with Neural DSP. And today I wanna to talk to you about the brand new Fortin Cali Suite. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the components and the features of the amplifier so you can confidently build up your own tones from the ground up. This is an absolute juggernaut of a plugin and incredibly versatile, ranging from pristine cleans to absolutely high gain rhythm and lead tones. I'm gonna go ahead and do a brief overview of the functions and explain how they work. And then I'll get to the tone demos afterwards and show how you can take my presets and adjust them to your liking. The presets for the previously released demo video are in the description below, along with the additional presets that I've made for today's video. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over some of the overarching features of this plugin. As with previous releases, the user interface is gonna be fairly similar. We have the input and output knobs, we have the gate, we have the mode knob, which switches between a mono and a stereo input signal, and we have the oversampling switch. If you wanna know more about the oversampling switch, I actually addressed it in detail in FAQ episode number two. So go ahead and check that out if you're curious as to how that affects the quality of the processing of your signal. Then we have the preset section, which is going to allow you to save the current configuration, trash the current preset if you so choose, search for presets on your hard drive, or click the magnifying glass to go to your presets folder. You can click the drop down menu to go to your default settings, artist tones, factory settings, or user presets. A cool feature of all the Neural DSP plugins is the icons up here at the top represent the different components of your plugin. Now you can turn them on and off with a right click or a double click of the icon. So in case you want to mix and match different components from different plugins and then set up your own signal chain in your DAW, you can do that. We have the MIDI mapping menu here at the bottom left. So if you want to control the plugin remotely from your MIDI controller, here is where you would adjust your settings. Then also in the bottom left, we have our tuner. You can access this in your standalone or your DAW. We have the pedal section, which if you are at all familiar with the Fortin Nameless or the Fortin NTS, you're going to recognize all of these pedals. We have the Fortin Zool noise gate, which is going to keep your signal clean in between notes. We have the Fortin hex drive, which is your overdrive pedal, and we have the Fortin grind, which is a booster pedal. Moving over to the head section, we can choose between the three different channels by clicking the icons at the bottom, clean channel, overdrive one, and overdrive two. Each channel is equipped with your master volume control, your presence knob, bass, mid, and treble knobs. In addition to the tone stack is the pulse sat function, which is gonna add another layer of gain and compression to your signal. Note that if you're on your clean channel, however, it's not really gonna start kicking in and affecting your signal until the gain knob is above its two o'clock position. An interesting feature of the Fortin Cali are the thump and hair switches. The thump switch selects the power amp resonance peak. To the left is the lowest frequency resonance, to the center is the highest and mid-range boost, and to the right is sort of a medium setting. And the hair switch is a three-way select for negative feedback power amp control of high frequency interaction between amplifier and speakers. What that means is it makes the power amp response raw like a vintage British amp in the center, smooth like a modern high gain lead amp to the right, and an in-between setting to the left. Now your thump and hair switches are affected by the master volume control, so always be aware of where it's positioned while you're dialing in your tones. On the clean channel, we have a single gain knob with its own dedicated bright switch. And then on overdrive one and overdrive two channels, we have gain one and gain two knobs, gain two having its own dedicated bright switch. Now your bright switch will affect your tone less as the gain two knob is bumped up. Next, we have our cab sim section, which is full of 125 impulse responses, all captured by Adam Nolly Get Good. When we go to the drop down menu, we see a bunch of familiar names are Dynamic 57, Dynamic 421, Condenser 414, Condenser 184, Ribbon 121, and Ribbon 160, and you can load your own custom impulse response. Below that, we have our position and our distance knobs, level knob, phase flip, and our on and off switches. And if you so choose, you can always click and drag our microphone to dial in your tone. So I'm gonna go through a bunch of my presets and show you how these features can help you adapt these to your own liking. As mentioned before, the Zool is just gonna be a noise gate that's gonna keep your signal clean in between your notes. So that way this noise 
doesn't get processed by the amp head. Now let's talk a bit about the hex drive. Now I use the hex drive whenever I want a little bit more of a mid forward tone. Whenever you're running your signal through the hex drive, it's gonna scoop out a little bit of the lows and accentuate the one and two K frequency area. It also cuts a little bit of highs as well, but if you wanna let all of that through, you take your tone knob and turn it all the way up. But you can add gain and saturation with the drive knob here, or you can take the level and boost it into your head to get some extra saturation out of your head section. But I'm gonna show you this riff and just kind of play around with the settings and let you hear what it does. So for a couple of these presets like Man in the Box and for Spoon Man, I used the hex drive because I wanted a little bit more of that sort of mid forward sound because that's what that sort of 90s grunge rock was based off of. So you can get a lot of saturation, a lot of flexibility out of just this one pedal alone. But let's go ahead and move on to the Fortin Grind. The Fortin Grind really complements seven string, eight string, and baritone guitars. Anything that's down tuned that has a whole lot of low end, this helps clean it all up. When you look at the EQ curve of a signal sent through the Fortin Grind, it really scoops out a lot of the low end compared especially to the hex drive and accentuates a lot of the top end. Now I said before that it complements seven string, eight string, and baritone guitars before, but one of my favorite things to do recently is use the Fortin grind on particularly warm, clean channels. So like for this preset, I kind of set it up to be a Nick Johnston sort of sound. Okay, so next up, let's talk about the master volume control, the thump switch, and the hair switch, since they're all interconnected. Now, if you're at all familiar with the Nameless or the NTS, the master volume control acts like the real thing. When you push the master volume control up, it's gonna saturate the power amp section, giving you an additional layer of saturation, a lot of warmth, and it's gonna kind of darken up the tone a little bit. Conversely, when you pull the master volume control down, it thins out your signal. So maybe if you have like, eight string guitar and you want to take a little bit of the low end out, you can pull that master volume control down and you'll get the same effect. Now what's different between the Nameless and the NTS from the Fortin Cali is the addition of the thump and the hair switches. These both change how the power amp reacts with the impulse response. The thump switch is a three-way select that changes the power amp resonance peak, while the hair switch is a negative feedback power amp control of high frequency interaction between amplifier and speakers. What this means is that the hair switch in its center position is gonna sound more like a vintage British amp, on the right's gonna be a more high gain lead amp, and on the left it's gonna be sort of an in-between setting. With the thump switch on the left, it's the lowest frequency resonance, the center is the highest and mid-range, and the right is going to be sort of an in-between medium stage.
And the master volume control position does affect how the thump and the hair switch interact with the power amp. Then we get to the tone stack, the bass, mid, treble, and presence. And you can use these similarly to the physical models and push them to their extremes to get some really cool saturation and different effects on your tone. Now, a cool addition to the tone stack is this pulsat function. This adds a layer of global saturation for compression and additional gain. Note that if you were on the clean channel, it doesn't start to really affect your tone until the gain knob is above its two o'clock position. Now, when we get to the overdrive one and two channels, we actually have four levels of gain that we can add to our signal. We have our gain one knob, which is our first gain stage. Gain two is our second gain stage with its own dedicated bright switch. We have the pulse sat, as previously mentioned, and we have the violence switch. Now, each one of these is going to interact with your signal differently, so I do advise you to play around with them. So this particular preset, I was really playing a lot of Doom Eternal, so rip and tears great track. So you can see that I wanted to get sort of a gradual amount of saturation. I actually have the hex drive on, a little bit of gain. I have the level boosting into the head. The gain knob is just a bit above four. Gain two is also just a bit above four. Now I have the bright switch in its right hand position, which is going to give a little bit of extra top end. And then the violent switch is activated. So let me go ahead and deconstruct this and then reconstruct it for you guys. You can hear that the bright switch in its right hand position adds a lot of saturation to the top end. So in its right hand position is the most, to the left is the mid position, and in the center is the least. Then we add the violence switch, which is aptly named. and then the hex drive just to top it all off. Now you could put the pole sat in there as well to give an additional level of saturation, but I found it was just a little too much for my taste. Now you don't necessarily have to go in that same exact order. Different combinations of different gain are going to give you different results.
So then we move on to the impulse response section, which has 125 different impulses in six different microphones captured by Adam Nolly Get Good. Now, some people were asking me about how I end up choosing the impulse response that I ultimately go with for a tone. And the best way to do that, I found, is just to go quickly through the impulse responses and see which one stands out to you. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the Dynamic 57. I'm gonna roll through the menu and we're just gonna listen to the impulse responses and pick out the things that we like and don't like. The important thing about going quickly is so that you don't let your ear have a chance to adjust to the frequencies that you're listening to. Ear fatigue and sensory adaptation are a real thing and it happens a lot faster than you anticipate. So at a glance, when I listen to these impulse responses, the Dynamic 57 and 421 are pretty bright. The 414 and 121 are really low end heavy. The Condenser 184 and the 160 are a little bit more flat, a little bit maybe more mid range. So then I can ask myself what microphones are going to complement each other, which ones are gonna fit the vision for the song that I'm trying to create. If I'm going for something like rip and tear, I know it's going to be something fairly bright and it's going to be something that really cuts through the mix. So then I can start making my decisions based off of the vision that I'm thinking about. A 57 is going to really cut through the mix. And then if I want to either round it out or put a little bit more mid range, I might go with the condenser 184 or the 160. If I'm looking to complement that with a really big low end, I'll put on the 121. Once I've picked out the impulse response that I want, I can then adjust the position and the distance to change how that microphone sounds. If you want, you can even just click and drag the microphone to change its position and distance. So you can hear as I'm switching through the impulse responses, they start to really change the dynamics of the playing. And this will really adapt your sound to whatever mix you're trying to go for. At the beginning of any Artist Tones videos that I try to do, it's usually me flipping through my impulse responses even before I touch the head of the pedal section. The impulse response is one of the most important aspects of your tone because that's the EQ curve of your signal. If you think of the mix as a giant jigsaw puzzle, the EQ curve determines the shape of the puzzle piece that you're trying to fit into your mix. So that is the brand new Fortin Cali Suite. Hopefully this demonstration showed you the versatility of this plugin. There are so many other ways that you can dial in tones, but hopefully this gives you a foundation that you can use to build your own tones up with this plugin. Thank you so much for checking out this video. As previously mentioned, there will be links in the description so you can download your trial of the Fortin Cali today, as well as all of my presets. And while you're there, please leave a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for notifications on when we upload new content to this channel. Comment down below and let me know if you like this content and if you want to see more like it. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.